Hey everyone, um, today we will be starting our lectures with the eye. So the first part of the eye is the eyelids, right? And today we will be studying the basic anatomy and physiology of the eye. So, structure of the eyelid, right? And this is the structure of the eyelid. It, it contains uh, all these uh, layers, right? And starting from the outside towards the inside, there's the skin, then we have the connective tissue layer, there's the striated muscular layer, there's the fibrous layer, there's the uh, aponeurosis of the levator muscle, there is the non striated muscular layer, and then there is the conjunctiva. From outside to in, from superficial to deep, right? That way. So, starting off with the skin. So the skin is, this. the skin in the eyelid is actually the thinnest skin in the whole body, right? It's almost transparent, right? And it contains, uh, just like every skin, in the, uh, skin everywhere in the body, it contains sweat glands, it contains sebaceous glands, it also has hair in the form of uh, eyelashes, right? And then after that, there is the connective tissue, right? After that, which supports the skin. And then below the connective tissue, there is a striated muscular layer. And that striated muscular layer is actually the uh, is actually a, a part of the uh, orbicularis oculi muscle, right? If you if you recall from your anatomy, uh, that if, and there is let's say this is the eyelid, right? Uh, this is the eye, and over here is a little iris and pupil, right? So orbicularis oculi is actually the muscle which covers. Uh, all this place right it, and it circles around down here as well so it's like in the form of a circle it's orbit it's like an orbit right that's why it's called orbicularis because it's in the form of an orbit right it, it orbits around the whole eye it's circular so orbicularis oculi that's also one of the layers uh, it, it constitutes the striated muscular layer then there's the fibrous layer below that and this fibrous layer one of the main components of this fibrous layer is the tarsal plate we'll be talking about that tarsal plate in a moment then there is the levator epineurosis. Let's talk about a little bit of anatomy again. Uh, here is the eyelid, right? And if we ignore, uh, not the eyelid, here's the eye, I mean. So if we ignore the, 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 uh, the orbicularis oculi, we know that there is a muscle up here towards the area of the forehead and it extends its aponeurosis. Aponeurosis is basically a tendon, right? A, ten, a tendon which is uh, flattened, right? So it extends its aponeurosis by when it when, when this muscle contracts, it pulls the eyelid up. As a result, we can open our eyes. So it's levator, right? It's levator palpebrae, levator, it elevates. And then after that, there is a non striated muscular layer. There's the conjunctiva, which we'll be talking about in, in, uh, in the next lectures. And of course, the eyelashes, simple to understand. Structure of the eyelid, so glands, there are basically three types of glands that you really need to know. There are the meibomian glands, the glands of Zeiss, the glands of Moll. Sebaceous and sweat glands, as we talked earlier, that the skin of the eyelid contains sebaceous and sweat glands, the skin on the front, right? But if you, uh, but these, these glands, these three, are located on the margins. Margins. There's something wrong with my mouse today. I don't know what's going on. Margins, right? Uh, let's, let's, let's have a little bit of anatomy again. Shall we? So let's imagine this is our eye, right? We are looking at it from a side view, right? And it has eyelashes as well, right? Let's make, uh, sorry, uh, eyebrow. Uh, uh, it has eyelids as well. And here's the upper and lower eyelid, right? And we know that from the eyelids there arises uh, these eyelashes, right? And here's the eye and uh, here's the iris and the pupil. If we zoom in on this part, sorry for my ugly drawing. Uh, if you zoom in on this part right here, and if we, uh, if, we, if we make it big, right, let me take a white color, like that. Okay, so here's a side view of the eyelid. We'll see. See, there are a few important things in the eyelid which you really need to know. First of all, okay, let's, let's draw the eyelids, uh, the eye eyelashes first, right? These are the two eyelashes which I just drew. Um, inside, this, uh, inside the eyelid, there is this very important structure called the tarsal plate. Right? It is, in fact, the structure which gives the eyes, uh, the eyelids, a lot of rigidity. Right? It's it's a hard, stiff structure. Right? And if you, if you touch your eye, in fact, if you touch the margin of your eye, you'll feel that it's actually very stiff. And this is actually because of the tarsal plate. This is a very important structure. And from the tarsal plate arises a gland. Right? From the tarsal plate arises a gland, and it is conveniently called the tarsal gland. Right? But if you really want to make it difficult, or as as, all, as as the as our teachers love to do, they call it the meibomian glands, right? Meibomian glands. Uh, so there are uh, tarsal gland or meibomian gland. That is one of the glands which which we just talked about. Then there are two more glands which you need to talk about. There are the glands of mole and glands of Zeiss, right? So there are sorry, there are glands of Zeiss over here and there are glands of mole over here, right? So 
again, once again, it's just fancy names, right? Glands of Zeiss. What are glands of Zeiss, basically? Glands of Zeiss are actually sebaceous glands. They secrete oily secretions, right? Oily secretions, uh, which help in moisturizing the eye and keep the tear film intact. And then there are glands of mole. And glands of mole, they are actually sweat glands. They release watery secretions. So glands of Zeiss, right? Glands of mole and meibomian glands, right? Tarsal and eyelashes, right? And of course, there is also the uh, the, the striated muscle which we spoke, uh, which we talked about a few minutes ago, the orbicularis ocular, right? That is also there, right? So skin, then there's uh, this uh, muscular layer, and then there is uh, this tarsal plate, fibrous layer, right? See, skin. Can we forgot the connective tissue? That's not important that much. We have the striated muscular layer, then the, then the fibrous layer, which we just spoke about. So yeah, the, the glands which we, which we were just talking about there, the meibomian glands, the glands of Zeiss, the glands of mole, right? Easy. Now blood supply. Nah, it's just not really important, right? If you really want to know it, fine, for the sake of completeness. They're, they're, the, blood, the, the eyelid is supplied by the ophthalmic and lacrimal arteries, branches of the ophthalmic and lacrimal arteries, and so is the lymphatic drainage, not really important, periauricular and submandibular, right? Periauricular, submandibular, sub, uh, below mandibular, the mandal, so they're below the mandal, uh, sorry, sorry, not mandal, <laughs> Mand mandible, I mean, they're below the mandible, and periauricular. Peri means around, auricular means the ear, right? It refers to the ear. So periauricular around the ear. Motor innervation is a bit important, right? Because this deals with pathologies. There are certain pathologies in, in the eye, like for example, ptosis, P-T-O-S-I-S, ptosis. Okay, there's something really wrong with my mouse right now. I don't know what's going on. So ptosis is when your eyelid does not open properly, right? And it's very, and ptosis is a very big indicator of certain pathologies. So we really need to know what causes ptosis and of course, Ptosis is caused when the, the muscles of the eye, they're not working properly. And, and for that, we really need to understand its motor supply. So we have the oculomotor nerve, which uh, innervates the levator muscle, right? The levator muscle is is, is uh, the one which opens the eyelid. Then there's the facial nerve, which, which innervates the orbicularis oculi muscle. We also have some sympathetic innervation, right? The sympathetic innervation, it supplies the superior tarsal, tarsal muscle. The superior tarsal muscle is also called um, a Muller's muscle, right? A difficult name if you want it. We'll talk about all these uh, in, in later in, in later videos when they're associated with pathologies, right? Right now, it's just a basic introduction. Then we also have the sensory innervation, which is, I mean, we can go into details. There are uh, the branches of trigeminal nerves. We can go into the sub-branches, uh, uh, like it's the, the, the ophthalmic and maxillary regions of the uh, trigeminal nerve actually supply it, but let's not go into that. Uh, trigeminal nerve supplies the sensory supply. Uh, that's it, right? I, th I think that's sufficient. And then, of course, functions, easy, very easy, not very difficult to understand. Mechanical protection, uh, it protects from mechanical uh, trauma, uh, right? And maintenance of tear film, right? This is important because these, uh, in the eyelids, there are glands, which you just studied right now, and some of these glands produce oily secretions, right? And these oily secretions, they deposit on the eye and they they maintain the tear film, right? So, so, the, so, the, so, the, it, so it's... So the tears, they're not like uh, in, in uh, they're not discontinuous. They are all over the eye, and they're they're uh, uniform. So it maintains this film in in the proper way, and then like of course it prevents dryness. Thank you. See you in the next lecture.